Hello, let's see. We have a couple folks in the room. So good morning, it's Thursday. Oh, thank you, Kellyanne. So good morning, it's Thursday. As you can see, we're in a different setup. So hopefully you're not freaked out a little bit too much. I do exist outside of my home office. One of the things I'm gonna actually have you all do, so you know how usually we start 10 minutes after the hour. We're gonna do the same thing here, but we're gonna do 15 minutes out the hour because I feel like you guys are gonna need a little bit of time to go get some stuff. If you wanna follow along with me as we bring the stencil that we actually made yesterday to life in the kitchen. So one of the things I'm actually gonna have you guys look for is a whole plethora of things that are available in your kitchen. If you don't have anything, these things in your kitchen, don't worry, you can just follow along and be able to replicate this recipe a little bit later. So right now I'm gonna add into your actual chat box the ingredients that you're gonna need in order to follow along with me. So if you remember yesterday, I was talking about how I was inspired by Paige's Instructable using a stencil. Well, I'm gonna give you a quick sneak preview of the stencil that I made yesterday. This one I made using my 3D printer, but I also printed my stencil, and I'm gonna show you how you can actually trace your stencil or print it and be able to use some thicker paper, such as here, I have some cardstock, or you can use cardboard. Or, worst case scenario, you can freehand it, because all this is showing you is how you can jazz up your beverages using Tinkercad for inspiration or using it as an outline for your stencil. So if you look at your chat box, you will see in a moment that there's a website link the website link is for a hot cocoa recipe. You don't have to make hot cocoa, but just as I showed you in the video, it kind of is one of those few things that will actually let you really see how wonderful using a stencil can be. So if you want to go ahead and grab those items, I'm going to go ahead and add I'm gonna make sure that you guys can actually see the angle here in terms of my actual workspace down here. So I'm gonna put myself on mute. So I'm gonna say, please follow the actual ingredients needed. If you have everything straight, the other things I'm gonna ask you all to have. Woohoo, why is my computer so loud? Additional materials. As always, I'm gonna ask you all for paper, pen, or some kind of writing utensil. I can't type today. As well as making sure that if this is your first time here, making sure you go ahead to tinkercad.com and create a Tinkercad account. If you've been with us at some point this week, go ahead and log into your Tinkercad account, especially if you were here yesterday and already have your stencil CAD model. So I'm gonna put myself on mute. You're gonna see me getting some last minute stuff straight as I'm making sure you guys can actually see my table angle. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the Q&A section, but welcome to the Bajika Tinkercad webinar. So for those of us, so for those of you just joining us, this is gonna be a special webinar because I'm actually in my kitchen. So the things you're gonna need is available in the actual chat box. So to put it quite bluntly, you're gonna need some hot cocoa or a cocoa powder mix. So if you still have some hot cocoa mix left over in your kitchen, go ahead and grab that. Or some milk chocolate if you wanna go old fashioned. I like to add a little bit of vanilla extract to my hot cocoa. So go ahead and grab that. And some kind of milk or milk alternatives. For example, you can use oat, 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 oat milk, soy milk, almond milk. You can also use plain milk or you can use a little sweet cream. I like sweet cream in my hot cocoa, so we're doing that. And lastly, marshmallows. If you don't have marshmallows like me, I'm actually gonna be using whipped cream in order to make the top of my hot cocoa. And the reason we're using that is just so we can have a nice white blanket canvas for us to do our latte art. So for those who were here yesterday, you saw the little sneak peek at Paige's Love Potion Latte in which she used a stencil. And what I mean by stencil is basically, this is what we made in Tinkercad yesterday. 
And this is what we're gonna use in order to jazz up our actual um, coffee drinks today. Well, I said coffee, hot cocoa. See, I'm mixing my liquids. Our hot cocoa beverage today. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to jazz up everything with your stencil to add a little personalization. And if you have any questions about to go on mute, as you get the materials that are in the chat box, feel free to ask me, but once again, if you wanna make the hot cocoa with us, you're gonna need the ingredients on the right-hand side. In addition, as always, when you come to our webinars with Tinkercad, you're gonna need paper, a writing utensil, such as a pen, colored pencil, or a marker, as well as logging into your Tinkercad account. If it's your first time here, then you just need to go to tinkercad.com and create an account while we're waiting for everyone to join into this webinar. So feel free to drop a question if you have one, and we're gonna start in another nine minutes. So I wanna make sure you have all those materials in front of you. See, this is how I get in trouble. Because I like to hum, and I'm going to keep saying this this week until everyone's like, okay, we get it. You like to hum. I just have to catch myself so you'll hear me start humming something and then go, mm. Can't finish that song, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right now, I'm going to see if everything technology-wise is working out okay. Because I want to make sure that you all are able to actually see my workspace. And when it comes to this new technology or using Zoom webinars, you always have to test your space. So you don't have to worry about 3D printing anything. So one of the things I'm gonna show you today is if you have a regular desktop printer, you can actually print your stencil and then cut it out in order to actually do this project. If you don't have a printer, you can use a blank piece of paper and put it over your computer screen and lightly trace your actual design in Tinkercad. Now, does that take a lot more time? It does. So what I would suggest doing with this morning's webinar is following along with me so you can replicate the steps outside of this live webinar. So this is showing in real time how I would do it and then allowing for you to be able to see this again, either on the YouTube channel as a replay, if you wanna recreate it once you have a bit more time. Today is more about me showing you some other things you can do with Tinkercad. You don't necessarily need a 3D printer, so don't panic. It's not gonna stop you from joining this webinar. Most of the webinar is us actually being in Tinkercad, and then the last part is seeing how I brought our Tinkercad stencil model to life in order to actually use it to decorate some things. So don't panic if you don't have a 3D printer, just make sure you have the other stuff in the materials list and you don't even need the hot cocoa ingredients unless you wanna make the hot cocoa with us. So relax, chill. Okay. 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 I have no idea what's going on. Okay. Sorry about the weird noise. Is everyone okay? Yes. So yesterday's lesson will be on YouTube. It's a little longer than usual, so it's going to take some time. Let me go ahead. Okay. Hi. So I did a prototype run of this the other day. You're seeing the other half of my kitchen. And so I wanted to make sure that we have enough height so you can actually see this part today. So this is what we call bootlegging it. Usually I have a couple of more tripods, but we're going to see if we can make this work today. And if not, we're going to old fashion it. Okay, so in the actual Q&A section, could everyone let me know? Oh, dear God, yes. Thank you, Kellyanne. You need scissors. How could I forget that you need scissors? Oh, 
oops, I'm human. I can make mistakes. My apologies. You guys have been in the classroom when the teacher forgets something. My bad. Scissors. And if you're particular, a ruler as well. But scissors, <laughs> scissors are more important. Oops, I forgot scissors, so you have that. So can everyone let me know in the Q&A part if they can actually see my workstation as well as me at the same time? Do not worry if you didn't 3D print your stencil. I'm just showing you how I use mine and you can do this a little later. So if you don't have your stencil 3D printed, because it takes time, if you have a 3D printer, do not panic, it's okay. This is not, this is not school. You're not going to get grades or anything like that. You guys are so dedicated to this. You're like, oh my God, I did 3D print my stencil. Don't worry. This is chill. It's a chill moment. Okay. Yep. You can see both. Yes. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to move this over to make sure you can actually see, see, I'm going to actually have my stencil here. And I'm just going to be perfecting, but we're not going to start for another like four to five minutes. So free to go ahead and get whatever you need in order to make your life carefree. I don't know where I got that from, but I'm just going to let it go. And while we're talking about scissors. Haha, -ha, <laughs> I forgot my scissors. So we have our scissors. I would also say your writing utensil. Today, I'm not gonna use a pen. I'm actually gonna be using my permanent marker. And the reason I'm using my permanent marker is so it's a little easier for me to see the actual trace. So I'm just gonna do a couple of pieces of prep work and then we'll get started. If you have any questions, I'm here and available. So just feel free to hit me up in the Q&A section, but it looks like you both, everyone can see both me looking at the camera as well as my workspace. If there's any time while I'm doing this, you can't really see what I'm doing, don't worry, do not panic. Simply let me know in the Q&A part and I could double check my angles here. Because sometimes I get really involved in a project and I forget to double check like, oh, my arm moved out of the shot or this moved out of the shot. So I have to double check that. And yes, you're seeing my <laughs> dish corner, but it's okay. I'm human. We got to go. Let's see, yes, you can see me and the workspace, perfect, okay. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of more minutes to get yourselves together while I'm still getting myself together. And do do do. And also, if you wanna know like the secret thing about this recipe, this recipe I've shared with you all is the actual hot cocoa recipe that I use personally anytime I feel myself jonesing for some hot cocoa. So this has been a recipe I've actually tested out, I think almost three years now. So if, you, if you're questioning my ability to get you the best hot cocoa recipe, this is the best hot cocoa recipe based on my preliminary research. I do not claim to be the best person when it comes to hot cocoa, but I think I have some taste. I saw someone going, how'd you get this hot cocoa recipe? And I just wanna say my name and go, um, you know, it's a funny thing. I've actually tested this one. So let's make sure I see a couple more questions coming in. Ooh, Lordy. I see a couple more questions coming in. Also, I can see you typing, but I can't really see what you're doing until you show me. So I'm not being creepy and looking at you typing as um, I feel a couple of you feel given some of the questions I got yesterday. This is not the Conspiracy Theory channel. If you're following us, following us with making a hot cocoa, I'm just gonna go back over what you need. You're gonna need cocoa powder, you're also going to need, this is probably a ridiculous amount of sugar, but sugar. <laughs> You're also going to need a pinch of salt, depending on how you like it. You'll need some milk or a milk alternative. If you need a measuring cup, I have it over here. Spoon to measure your milk or milk alternative. And then last but not, last but not least, see this is what happens when it's early in the morning. You're going to need some vanilla extract. So make sure you have all those things ready. You're logged into Tinkercad and you're ready to do this with moi. 
I'm gonna go ahead and make sure everything's hunky dory. One more time, I'm going to check. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Okay. Yes. Okay. And one more time. One more time. Okay, there we go. So let me know in the Q&A part if you have any other questions. Your hot chocolate doesn't have froth. Don't worry about any froth. So I'm actually gonna show you if you do not, you do not have any extra cocoa powder or marshmallows or anything to froth with, there's two things you can actually do. See, this is how I feel like a, I'm like some kind of YouTuber chef or what have you. You can use whipped cream or you can actually use powdered sugar. So you can dust the top with a little bit of powdered sugar and then use your stencil in order to add an outline using your cocoa powder. So there's a couple ways we can work around it. And that's why it's so important for you guys to ask me questions because then I can give you some ideas on how to work around any issues you have in your kitchen. Can I type the ingredients into the chat? Yes, I can, give me one second. Oh, the cream stuff. As I said before, don't worry about whipped cream. If you don't have whipped cream on hand, look and see if you have confectioner's sugar, also known as powdered sugar. You can do a light dusting of that on top, and then you can use your actual stencil and place it on top of your actual cup and then do a dusting of your outline in hot cocoa to still get that white base on the top of your hot cocoa and allowing your stencil to actually stand out. For the hot cocoa, I'm gonna go ahead and add the ingredients into the chat for those who are not able to actually go into the website. So give me one second so I can copy and paste for you all. See, this is one of the things that I wish that Zoom would allow for me to like upload images. If you have any Zoom gurus in your life, please tell them to connect with me. I would really appreciate it. Cause I would like to show more graphics and stuff for you all in Zoom, but. Mm. And I would say here, we're gonna use the microwave in order to warm up our milk. So don't worry in the actual ingredients list when it's like froth it up by using a whisk. We're not doing that fancy of a method. I like to keep it simple. If you want me to be fancy, I can be fancy, but you don't have to try that. Okay, so it's gonna look really bootleg, but it's two tablespoons of unsweetened cocoa powder, one to two tablespoons, not this whole jar, of sugar. Ah, I probably should cover the brand names, huh? Who cares? It's just a little webinar. A pinch of salt, if you like, one cup of milk or any combination of a milk alternative or a half and half or a cream. So you can use soy milk, you can use almond milk and the like. I'm actually gonna cut this camera for a second because it's distracting me. And a quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. So given I just posted the ingredients for folks, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of more minutes, but make sure your Tinkercad is actually open for you all to get started. And I'm gonna follow my own advice and make sure Tinkercad is open on my end. And I'm gonna keep Q&A open as I get the last bit of items I need on my end to make sure we're good to go. Boom. bad boy of salt. <laughs> now, one of the things I think we all can agree on is that we've become very conscious about washing our hands. And so for me, before I like to get started, even though I wash my hands earlier, I really, really, really like to start with clean hands. So I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands. You should too, after you finish gathering your ingredients. And then if you're ready, I want you to raise your hand 
So we can go ahead and get started. Once you have those ingredients, if you're following along with us with the hot cocoa, if you're not following along with us for the hot cocoa, then what I'm gonna need for you to do is just let me know by raising your hand that you have your pen, paper, scrap paper, based on what level you're gonna be following us, okay? I see a couple hands raised. I need a couple more, so I'll know. What do you got? And yes, I am literally gonna be washing. <laughs> see, this is the side they don't show you on YouTube, is that I don't have a staff, because I'm staying at home, who will actually wash the dishes, so I have to do it myself, along with nobody's gonna wash my hands for me. I have to do it. I'm not at that superstar level yet, but one day, one day I'll be at it. And so I got these straight. Wash my hands. It's wash your hands time for 20 seconds, which is like happy birthday, but you gotta sing it twice. So I'm washing my hands and I'm washing it twice. Cause it's a long time to get the 20 seconds of. Yes, I know everyone has their own version of their hand washing song. Usually I sing that one to myself, but why not entertain you all at the same time? Okay, so I see a couple more hands raised. So let me know if you have any questions or you need any alternatives. Yes, if you don't have sugar, go ahead. I may have to wash my hands again. Go ahead and use honey as a good sugar substitute. So don't fret. I like to call this being forced to work from home and being able to use things that are available in your home is one of the warm ups we're doing today to flex that creativity muscle. So I love the thinking outside the box I'm seeing in the actual Q&A parts about, I don't have this ingredient, can I substitute it with this ingredient? And the answer most likely, unless you're substituting sugar for vinegar, is you're good. So let me know with your hand raised if you're ready for us to get started. And I'm just gonna do a brief overview of what we did this week. And then we're gonna go into our actual stencil and Tinkercad and start bringing that bad boy to life. So let me see them hands, see them hands. Okay, I see a couple. Give everybody a little bit more time because I just threw you into the kitchen and you now have to search. It took me about 20 minutes, so if it's taking you a while, don't worry. And I'm also gonna have breaks as we shift from one activity to another. So if you need additional time, you can use that time as well if you need to gather additional ingredients. So again, don't panic. And I'm gonna make sure, hopefully, that we have enough time at the end in order for you to, for, ah, for you, huh, in order for me to show you the actual chocolate mold activity that I promised yesterday. So, mm -hmm, fingers crossed. I'm waiting on at least four to five more hands to be raised before we get started. So, no sweat. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and start cutting my stencil because I just happen to have it. This stencil part, don't worry. I'm gonna show you how you're gonna make a bootleg one with cardboard if you don't have a printer or a 3D printer. So that way you can at least get the idea of why we're using the stencil and how to actually jazz up your beverages. So this is gonna be a willing and dilling, <laughs> very hands-on component today. So I'm gonna give you guys one more minute for any last minute questions before we get started. In last minute substitutes you need? Oh yes, so I don't know about you all, but for me personally, I absolutely adore cooking in the kitchen. There's some times that I actually am not the hugest fan of it, and it's only because I don't like cleaning. I mean, cleaning can be calming sometimes, but when you cook like a very complicated dish or something that requires a lot of dishes, you're exhausted by the time you finish actually cooking it. And one of the things that bugs me is when you're like, yes, the dish came out perfect. I am like, I am like a Food Network star. I'm like a complete G in the kitchen. And then you turn around and you look inside your sink and you realize there's a pile of dishes. Yeah, no, that feeling I don't like. 
so sometimes I may be really in the mood or inspired to cook something. Like last week, I made Thai coconut soup, which I basically, well, is it really coconut soup? Yeah, technically it has coconut milk in it. But I basically cut up some sweet potatoes and added some coconut milk to it in order to jazz up my stay at home lunches. And after spending two hours roasting the sweet potatoes, blending them up, et cetera, and adding some coconut milk, um, I had a lot of dishes. And I, in particular, had a lot of dishes that were intensive cleaning dishes, which aren't my favorite. And I spent another 30 minutes cleaning up my mess. And I was like, was this soup worth two and a half to three hours of my time? Kind of, but it kind of made me go, I'm gonna have to make this soup last a little longer than I intended because I'm not going through this again. Okay, so I see a lot of hands raised. If you have any questions, let me know. But let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna clean up my mess right here. Practice what you preach. Go, go ahead, get rid of my scrap paper. And we will get started. So I'm going to have everyone's hands lowered because I'm going to ask another question. And my question for you all today, welcome again to the Bajika Autodesk Tinkercad webinar. Today, we're going to be showing you how to use Tinkercad in the kitchen in order to bring your projects to life. So raise your hand if you weren't with us yesterday and today is your first day joining this Tinkercad Bajika webinar in which we tinker together. So raise your hand so you can get a feel for how many people weren't with us yesterday because I have an alternative activity for you to do so you can still join us and still participate. Okay, I see one or two hands. Let me see if there's anybody else. Okay. So I see one or two people who weren't here with us yesterday. So don't panic. I'm going to explain what we did. So you'll be on the same page with everybody. So yesterday, we were able to actually explore Tinkercad a little further than what we did earlier this week. So if you weren't here the entire week, I'm going to get a quick review. The first day, we actually did something called a cupcake topper in order to learn the basics of Tinkercad. What a cupcake topper is, is a shape that you can actually insert into the top of a cupcake, most likely into the icing in order to decorate the cupcake based on a theme. So if I jump here for a second, I'm going to jump into my Tinkercad and magic. As you can see here, this is my cupcake topper that we did on Monday in order to showcase some basic skills involving Tinkercad. So you can see the theme here was the Avengers Endgame theme because I'm a huge Marvel nerd and so I did something from the heart or something that inspires me. On Tuesday, we actually did a quick warm-up which was involving around Tinkercad Circus 101 which allowed for us to explore how would you actually create a simple circuit. So we explored LEDs, we explored push buttons or controls, and various power sources, and how would you make a basic circuit, whether it was freeform or with a breadboard. Yesterday, we decided to dive a little deeper into a project. What was the project that has been our big project involving around finding an escape or something in your house? Let me know in the Q&A section for those who were here. What was the project we've been working on for the past couple of days as like our big review project? And for those who know me, you know that this is an active participation webinar. So let me know in the Q&A section. I see a couple of people have chimed in. Yes, the project we've been working on for the past couple of days outside of the cupcake topper to learn Tinkercad 3D design and the simple LED circuit to understand Tinkercad circuits was the Oasis project. What is the perfect oasis you can build in your own home to allow for you to have your private space to create, create TikTok memes, dance, music videos, so video game tournaments, whatever suits your fancy. And so we've been working on some layouts, as you can see here, using Tinkercad in order to have a blueprint on how we would actually bring that perfect oasis project to life. I just wanna remind you that Tinkercad and Instructables has announced that there is a contest, the Distance Learning with Tinkercad contest, in which you can actually submit your perfect Oasis project as a scene, which is a prize that is given to folks who actually showcase how they brought to life using Tinkercad anything that's a physical space, such as your perfect Oasis, or even parks and landmarks, if you want to take what we did with the perfect Oasis project and cratch it up a notch, or cratch it up, Lord, take it up a notch. Don't know what happened to my English today. But we're going to let that go. 
So that's what you can do actually with the distance learning contest. You can find all this information on the Tinkercad blog. I'm going to insert the link to the blog in the actual chat box if you want to check it out a little bit later. So don't forget, you can check that part out. But yesterday, we actually took a little walk on the wild side and actually decided to check out one of these projects for inspiration. The project we checked out for inspiration is Penelope's One Hour Stencil, and we decided to add our own twist to it. So as you can see here, this project is a stencil project that Penelope made using her 3D printer. So using Tinkercad originally, she decided to make a basic shape and then cut holes out of that basic shape in order to create a stencil. Now, for some of you who may not be familiar with stencils, us old school people had to use stencils in order to create our projects or posters because printers weren't really widely available. It could be contested and not even that available nowadays, but they weren't really available. So you couldn't go to school and print a piece of paper to be the title of your project and then cut it out and then paste it on your poster board. You actually had to buy these stencils and you had to sit there and painstakingly with like a pen or some markers or some color pencils and sit there for hours, in my case, because I'm a perfectionist, and actually trace and outline each letter on a straight line with your ruler, your actual poster title, and any other subtitles on your poster board, which made science fairs and history fairs a lot less cooler and a lot more painstakingly, let's call it, ugh, if you were that student. Nowadays, you guys can print, you guys can actually use spray paint and all these other things we didn't have available as 90 kids growing up. So be thankful for that. But that doesn't mean we still can't take inspiration from stencils. So yesterday, what we did in Tinkercad is we took inspiration from the stencil and we actually made our own version. So you can see here, Penelope made a stencil. I'm actually gonna do my spotlight because I see a question in regards to, it's kind of hard to see my mouse. So here you see the alphabet stencil that Penelope made. This was kind of the stencil I grew up with. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see a little clearer. And you can actually see how she made all the holes. So what we decided to do yesterday is that we made our own stencil inspired by whatever we thought we would want to create a stencil design for. So this here is the stencil that I made yesterday. As you can see here, using my left-hand camera angle, I made an egg hole shape here. I inserted some stars as holes. And then I inserted my organization's name, Bajika, at the top. So there was no denying that this was a Bajika stencil. Last night, after we signed off from our webinar, I took my actual Tinkercad model. I went over here to export, and I exported my Tinkercad model as an STL file. So remember what I said yesterday? You can export your Tinkercad files as an STL or an OBJ file. Once I exported my actual Tinkercad file, I went here to my actual 3D printing design software. So here, let me change my window. Sorry, sometimes I'm switching between windows so fast it takes a second for me to actually switch, so give me a second. So here you can actually see, I'm gonna make it a little larger. You can see here, if I change my angle, this is actually the stencil from Tinkercad. So the 3D printer that I have is a Dremel 3D20, and the software that I use is a Dremel 3D Idea Builder. This software allows for me to insert my Tinkercad model in order to send it to my 3D printer. Now, you may have noticed, if you have a sharp eye, that there's another model on my print bed, which is what we call this, because this is where you actually print your um, projects. You may notice, if you're very clever, that there's another print on here. Shh. That's for a little bit later, so don't worry about that, but that's a hint to what's gonna be one of our chocolate mold projects. So, I sent this over to my 3D printer last night. Last night wasn't all that great because my 3D printer decided to go womp, 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 and I actually got something called a spaghetti monster. If you don't know what a spaghetti monster is, it's a term for when you send a project over to your 3D printer, and your 3D printer, transforms it into something that looks like spaghetti. So you know how sometimes spaghetti looks like a mess when you're trying to twirl it around your fork? That's a spaghetti monster. And so before we continue, I wanna ask, how many of you guys have ever seen a 3D printer before? Or actually seen a 3D printer in action? Raise your hand so I can know. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we have quite a few folks. Maybe it's easier for me to ask when lower everyone's hand. Raise your hand if you've not seen a 3D printer in action before. Okay, that probably was the easier question to ask. So <laughs> it's different. You have to realize sometimes people have seen 3D printers or they know what you're talking about. And then other times, regardless of our exposure, we've heard of 3D printers, but we've not actually seen them in action before. So what I'm gonna show you is the actual process from start to finish of an example of a 3D printing project. So bear with me for one second. I wanna make sure everything's hunky dory. One moment. So I'm actually gonna play one of the videos that we created for our Bajika YouTube channel. This project was inspired by Black Panther and we're actually recreating the crown that's on Black Panther's mother's head. So it's actually Queen Ramonda is the name of the character. And we actually used Tinkercad in order to create her crown and we sent it off to a 3D printer. So the video I'm about to show you is actually gonna showcase how all of that worked. So give me about another 10 seconds because I want to make sure everyone can hear. And also, not only can everyone hear, but everyone can see because I've learned my lesson from earlier. Boom. Okay. Let me know. Welcome to MLab or Bajika Laboratory. I'm Nisha, your quirky leader in chief, and I'm joined by my fellow quirky colleague, Erica. Hello. Today we'll be creating a 3D model inspired by Queen Ramonda or the Queen of Wakanda that will be featured in the upcoming film, Black Panther. Ready to get started? Yeah. So to get started, we're going to be using a CAD software. Our software of choice, Tinkercad. If you look at Queen Ramona's crown, it's made with three basic shapes. One, a half sphere, the other, a tube, and a cone. So we're going to find those objects in Tinkercad and assemble it. We'll start with the half sphere. Make sure you dimension each of the objects so that they're proportionate. We'll bring in the tube. Make sure you're aligning all the objects so that they're at the center. We'll also bring in the cone and adjust the size. We'll make sure that the top is bigger than the bottom. And we're going to take out some material from the top as well as the bottom using the hold command. We'll group everything, change the color. That's it. Well, now that we have our CAD model of Queen Ramonda's crown, I think it's time to send this to the 3D printer. So was everyone able to hear that okay? Sorry, still trying to navigate multitasking here. So everyone, let's see. Okay, perfect. So that's an example of how a 3D printer works. You can tell that I basically took my Tinkercad model after I finished it exported it, sent it to a 3D printing software, like I showed you before, like my Dremel Idea Builder, and then I sent it over to my 3D printer. And the 3D printer, basically, it prints as layers. So think of it almost like printing thousands of layers. And each layer shows one actual image, and after a period of time, it builds up to create an actual object. So, Last night, I had a bit of a spaghetti monster. So instead of 3D printing something like this, it actually just 3D printed a ball of plastic. So as you saw in the video, a 3D printer transforms plastic such as PLA, which is similar to the plastics you will find in a water bottle, or you can have other ones like ABS, things you don't need to concern yourself about, but it's plastic. And sometimes when you're 3D printing, machines aren't perfect because humans aren't perfect. And sometimes it just makes a little glob that you can't do anything with. So early this morning, <laughs> I had to reprint my stencil in order to make sure that I was able to actually show you guys what the Tinkercad model looked like after it was done and being sent to a 3D printer. Now, I am not assuming you have a 3D printer. If you have a 3D printer, great. If you don't, you don't need that to actually do this project. But if you want to have an exact stencil, I just wanted to show you how Penelope made her exact stencil and what higher level engineers would do. That's not what I'm expecting from you all. 
do not worry. I see a lot of concern in the Q&A part. You don't need that. One of the things I'm gonna actually show you in Tinkercad today is how to create a 2D slice of your Tinkercad model. Now you may be wondering, well, what the heck is a 2D slice? Well, a 2D slice is different from a 3D slice because a 3D slice is taking into account three dimensions, right? So I want everyone to get their ruler in hand. I like this chunky ruler because it shows up really well on the camera. So raise your hand once you have your ruler in hand so I can know that you're following me on this step. Watch it. Just get your ruler. I need your ruler. Okay, we got the rulers. So 2D design is two dimensions. So that's length and width. So I want you to follow along with me. 2D design, length and width. So if we have a piece of paper, length and width. That is 2D design. So when we're talking about a 2D slice, it's almost like me taking one of those thousands of slices of our 3D model that we did in Tinkercad, and we're actually using that to create an outline like here. Now, what's the difference between 2D design and 3D design? Well, 2D design is length. Oh, wait, I done messed up my whole thing. Length and width, right? So when we're doing 3D design, we're adding three dimensions. And if we already know what two of those dimensions are, what do you think is the third dimension? Go ahead and let me know in the Q&A part. If we already have length and width, what is the missing third dimension that makes 3D design? Mm, okay, I see a couple people got it. Okay, a couple people got it. I want to see a couple more responses. Remember, this is an interactive webinar. I need you to make sure that you're on the same page with me so we can tinker together. So I see a couple more folks coming in. Yes, so you can either refer to it as height or depth. And you'll hear me refer to it interchangeably when I'm actually tinkering around with my Tinkercad designs. So 2D is length and width. That's what makes a 2D design. What makes a 3D design is length, width, and height. So you have three dimensions you're working with. So when we're gonna take a slice of our 3D design, so let's say we're taking the slice of our 3D print, we're taking one slice by length and width out of the thousands of the slices we could possibly have taken it out of and using this as a stencil. So what we're gonna need to do is actually create that's what So I'm gonna go back to Tinkercad and show you how I did it. Now, if you can't do this, don't worry. I'm showing you how I did it. The only thing you need to have is this here. And I'm gonna show you if you wanna do a quick trace of this stencil. It may take some time, but I'm gonna show you that as well. So everyone sees my stencils here, right? So I'm gonna go back to my home view by clicking the home icon on the left-hand side. And here, I have my actual thickness being 1 8 or 0 0.125. Whoop. Let me zoom in so it's a little easier for you to see. I already see some questions on that. So here I have the actual height or depth of my actual Tinkercad model as 0 0.125 inches. And you can double check what dimensions you're in based on looking at your snap grid down here. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put my spotlight so it's easier for you all to follow me as I'm using the mouse. So here I know it's in inches because my snap grid, which is each of these little squares here in Tinkercad, is one eighth of an inch, which lets me know my measurements are in inches. If you would like to edit your grid because of new situation you're dealing with today, you can go ahead and go to edit grid. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Is my computer little? Oh. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make sure you get your cup of coffee in the morning because you're making mistakes. And I forget that I had to wait and click off before I could edit grid. So when you go to edit grid, you can actually change the units and you can actually make it however width or length you desire. I'm already okay with my 10 inches by 10 inches, but that is totally fine. So here I have an actual thickness of 1 8 of an inch. In order to do a slice, this is gonna be kind of difficult to slice, right? because it's so thin. So I'm gonna actually thicken this up 
So I know everyone has a piece of paper next to them. What I want you to do is write down one eighth of an inch on that scrap piece of paper. I prefer you keep it on like a random part of the piece of paper you won't use, just so you can remember this measurement. So one eighth of an inch and write down thickness, depth or height. You can use any of those words just so you know. And yes, you're gonna start feeling like engineers today. We're gonna have math on pieces of paper and Tinkercad. Hey. So here we're gonna actually change our depth or height or thickness. Any of those words are interchangeable for what we're doing here today. I'm gonna increase it to about 0 0.5 inches. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and change it to 0 0.5 inches, press enter. Now, I just showed you that when we take a 2D slice of the 3D design, it's pretty much with taking a 3D design model, laying it flat, and taking a 2D design slice of that model. Now, how do we actually do that? We're gonna need something to slice it with. And the thing we're gonna use to slice it with is the hidden talent of your work plane in Tinkercad. We're gonna actually use your work plane in Tinkercad to take your 3D model and pull out a slice for us to use later. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, before I move on, do we have any questions? I'd just like to make sure we're good on that. Oh, what's one eighth of an inch in centimeter or millimeters? That's a good question. Let me pull out my trusty dusty ruler. Ooh, that is not exact. Let me actually go to Google. <laughs> Yes, I do not keep those numbers at the top of my head. Into millimeters. And I probably just got yelled at by your parents that I should have this memorized, but I don't because I have Google and I have a ruler. So it's exactly 3.175 millimeters is one eighth of an inch or 31.75 centimeters is one eighth of an inch. So hopefully that answers your question. Any other questions? Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna hop back into Tinkercad to go over our actual stencil model. So give me one sec to hop the screen. I'm like a DJ when it comes to these screens on here. So yeah, give me a moment as I change it up, change it up, change it up, change it up, boom. So here we're gonna zoom out and you're gonna slowly see Tinkercad coming back to life. So here we have our stencil model and she's looking, she looking a little thick. She's looking thicker than she was before. So now we're gonna go to our upper left-hand side and play around with our camera views. And we're gonna actually do a front view. Looking at the front view, we're gonna go ahead and change to fitted view, just so we can zoom in a little bit more. And what we're gonna do is gonna involve around this black triangle right here. So over the past couple of days, you've been exploring this black triangle and realizing this is how you can move your actual Tinkercad model or your 3D design model in and out of the work plane. And that's exactly what we're gonna do in order to take a 2D slice of our Tinkercad model. So I'm gonna click the black triangle here and I'm actually gonna lower this actual Tinkercad model in order to see that, that little dash here. You see that black dash? That black dash is actually what allows for us to know that we're slicing through our actual Tinkercad model. To give you a little bit better view, if you follow my finger here where you see the red dot, that black dash there is how it's slicing through our Tinkercad model. If we had a more complicated shape, we would probably care a little bit more about exactly what height we're slicing this. But at this point, we don't care because all of the holes in our stencil are holes that go all the way through. So regardless if we slice here or if we slice a little higher or lower, it's going to be the same slice because all of our holes go all the way through the stencil. So we should be good here. So now, I showed you before how I actually exported my Tinkercad model to send to my 3D printer. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna export my Tinkercad model as a 2D slice to some different software. Now this is the part you don't have to follow along with me unless you have Inkscape, Adobe Illustrator, or Photoshop. Those are pretty high-end design softwares, and that's what we're gonna use in order to manipulate or change the file that we're gonna receive to make this little 2D slice. I'm actually gonna send in the chat box some alternatives you can use in order to do this, 
But based on yesterday's feedback, you guys wanted me to show you how I would do this in my everyday life as an engineer or a product designer. So I'm gonna show you how I would do it typically. Do not follow along on this one on your computer. So sit back, relax. As long as you did your work plain slice and you export, just chill. Just chill with me. So here in Tinkercad, you'll notice that we sent our actual Tinkercad model using the export tool and sent it as an OBJ or an STL file. Those are your 3D printing formats that you can use. However, today we're gonna to use a different file format. The file format we're gonna to use today is an SVG file format, which stands for Scaled Vector Graphic. So a Scaled Vector Graphic like we talked about before, is one of those things that allows for you to export an image, but it doesn't get pixelated if you make it bigger or smaller. So one of the things you probably notice when you take a picture and try to display that picture on a very big screen is that you get a lot of like fuzziness on the picture, right? That's because it's pixelated. When it's pixelated, it means you're stretching out each of the pixels which are the little dots that help compose an image when you take a picture on your camera phone or smartphone or you're recording something. When you stretch out all those little dots when you, from your original image, it makes it blurry because it's trying to go from here to like here. And it only can do so much. When we use a scaled vector graphic file, our actual pixels will morph and move based on what size we want it. I'm gonna show you guys that with the software I'm gonna to use today called Inkscape. If you've never heard of Inkscape, don't worry. We like to call it as a free or open source, which means it's free for you to use design software. So I'm gonna go ahead and export it as an SVG file. And it's gonna take that 2D slice that we did right here and export it as an SVG. SVG, I keep saying SVG, SVG file. Now, Warning you once again, you don't have to have Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop installed. I'm just showing you the way I would actually do this. So again, at this point, once you've exported, just sit back, relax, and watch. Raise your hand if you were able to do that export as an SVJ, SV, as an SVG file. Seems like I have some homework on how to say some things properly. So let me see some hands raised. Let me know when you're at that step, just so I can make sure we're all together before I do anything crazy. Okay, have a couple more. Okay, so what I'm gonna show you now is what I'm actually doing with it in Inkscape. So I'm gonna show you here. So here is the actual Inkscape file. So one of the nice things, so one of the nice things about Inkscape is that I can actually alter the actual file. So see here, this is the original stencil that I imported from Tinkercad. So let me see if I can get a zoom, zoom, zoom. It's gonna be nice with me. So here you can actually see this the original um, Tinkercad 2D slice that I was able to get from my export of the SVG file using Inkscape software. And over here, I was able to change the color. So I'm gonna change it to green just to show you. So here I can actually change up how I want my outline to look just to make it easier for me to trace or cut, etc. I made a duplicate because I know myself. I'm gonna mess up the first cut most likely because as I told you all, I'm not an artist. I know my limitations, so I always make a duplicate copy just in case things don't go right the first time I do it. And then I actually made another copy, but instead of making an exact same size duplicate, I actually manipulated the dimensions here. So you see how this one's big? I actually readjust the size in order to make it a little bit bigger so it was clear for you all to see. Now, here comes the important part about scaled vector graphics. As I scale my file size and it gets bigger, you'll notice it doesn't look pixelated as I increase the file size. Matter of fact, it still pr looks pretty decent. Like all the proportions still look okay. That's the magic of a scaled vector graphic. Now we're still able to print and it still looks the same dimensions and we can still use it to trace just like we did before. That's why when you do a 2D slice, 
it's imperative and important that you actually use an SVG file. And that's why Tinkercad has it as the export option. Now, another cool thing you guys can actually do with SVGs, and I don't know your guys' familiarity with this, but how many of you guys have ever heard of a laser cutter? I wanna see a show of hands. Oh wait, one sec, I forgot to lower the hands. Now I wanna see a show of hands. Who has heard of a laser cutter? Okay, we see a lot of hands here, okay. So one of the th neat things about using SVG files is that you can actually send them to a laser cutter. So for those who don't know, because I see a lot of hands raised um, for people not familiar with the concept, a laser cutter is basically a machine that uses a laser in order to cut SVG or other files, just like a 3D printer, 3D prints or prints 3D designs. A laser cutter uses a laser to cut things. So one of those popular things that laser cutters can cut is plywood, acrylic, which is like a type of plastic, and things like that. One of the reasons I absolutely adore laser cutters is that it allows for you to quickly prototype projects in a very fun manner. So a quick video I'm gonna show you all, for those who don't know, is I'm gonna show you actually how to laser, um, what, ah, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna show you how a laser cutter works, and the file format that you can use with the laser cutter is the same SVG file format we just did. So not only is it great for creating stencils, it's also great for using other pieces of equipment you'll find in makerspaces or engineering labs. So I'm pulling it up right now. Give me one second to make sure everything's hunky-dory. And then we're going to see how we can use SVG files. Like let's say you didn't want to 3D print your stencil. You wanted to instead use a laser cutter to create it. How we would do that? So let me go ahead and change my screen. So you can see, I don't think that's a copyright song. I don't think that's copywriting that. But let's go ahead. Welcome to InLab. I'm Nisha, your leader on this maker journey. And I'm once again joined by my colleague, Erica. Hello. In this episode, we'll be building a 3D model of a ring blade inspired by the character in the key. Whoop. My bad. I'm trying to rewind for you all. Give me one sec. Welcome to InLab. I'm Nisha, your leader on this maker journey, and I'm once again joined by my colleague, Erica. Hello. In this episode, we'll be building a 3D model of a ring blade inspired by the character Nakia in the upcoming film, Black Panther. Nakia, the proudest member of the Dora Milaje and also his fiercest warrior, not only fights to protect Wakanda, but also her king, King T'Challa or the Black Panther. Ready to get started, Erica? Sure. So to design Nakia's ring blades, we're going to be using Tinkercad. If you look at the design of Nakia's ring blades, you'll notice that it's made with basic shapes, one being the tube and the round roof for the grips. We'll start by bringing in the tube into the work plane. We'll adjust the size and change the color. Once we're done with that, we'll bring in the round roof, adjust the size, rotate it, and bring it towards one corner of the tube. This will serve as our grip. After that, we're going to bring in some cylinders to create some features where we'll put some LEDs. We'll turn those cylinders into holes, group it, and then once you're done with that, we can export that to be laser cut. Awesome, I can't wait to see how this turns out. of how a laser cutter works and you saw how we still use the Tinkercad software and exported an SVG file, SVG, yes I got it right, an SVG file in order to actually create those ring blades, you would be doing the same thing if you were to send this to a laser cutter. The last piece of technology I wanted to go over with you all on why this is an important tool to use is how you guys have heard of a Cricut, uh, Cricut Explorer Air or any kind of desktop cutting machine that you may have seen at a Michaels or a Joanne Fabrics or something of that nature. Let me see a show of hands. Who's ever heard of a Cricut machine? Okay, so we have a lot of folks. So I'm gonna show you what a Cricut machine is towards the end of this actual webinar, but pretty much you can use a Cricut machine, which is almost like a laser cutter, but instead of using lasers, it uses a blade. You can also send your SVG files over to a Cricut maker in order to turn this into reality. But we've talked enough about machines and makers and things like that. 
So let's go ahead and actually start looking at how we're going to bring our stencil to life. So we already have our stencil in Inkscape. I'm going to go back to that screen. Give me one second. So in Inkscape, we already have this stencil here. So what I can do is save as a PDF in order to send it to a printer. Now, if you don't already have a printer, don't worry. This is the perfect opportunity. This is what I call the bootleg moment. You can actually write in your computer screen and very gently with a piece of paper, use a pencil or a pen. Hopefully, I'm gonna not say hopefully, don't ever use a permanent marker when you do this. Always use a regular ballpoint pen and hold down the piece of paper and lightly trace your stencil and then actually go back and cut your actual stencil out. Now, this is a very slow process you're gonna to have to do, but don't worry about it. That's just the way it is. But if you wanna follow along with us, what I would highly recommend is using either a piece of thick cardstock, so a piece of cardstock like this here, or if you actually happen to have, like I do, some Amazon packages around, go ahead and grab that piece of material, grab your scissors and actually cut a little piece. So you're not gonna have a stencil that's exactly your Tinkercad model until you take the time to trace and then actually cut it out of this or your actual cardboard material, but you can actually just get a feel for how you would use a stencil for your project. So I'm going to give some bonus shout outs. If someone remembers the actual dimensions of the lid I used yesterday as the template for creating my stencil. So send it to me in the Q&A part. Who actually remembers the diameter or the width and length of the top that I actually used yesterday? I'm going to give you guys a minute to remember. It should be in your Tinkercad model. If you click it, it should actually be the width, length, or diameter of the actual top that I use. And give me one sec. We have a couple of questions. Hmm. Someone said if it was 21 or 7. So that is close. That was actually the dimensions of this container right here, this bad boy, which was my Starbucks cup. What was the actual dimensions of the lid that I used yesterday, the metal lid? If you weren't here yesterday, no worries. <laughs> See, this is why we write notes, folks. This is why I always say, have your pen and paper when you come into the in-lab classroom. When you come into this dojo, you've got to be prepared. So the actual diameter or the width and length is 2.5 inches. So I want you to write that down. The exact measurement is 2.25 inches, but I gave it a little bit of leeway because, oh, I have a couple questions. I gave it a little bit of leeway. <laughs> Someone said cheese. So is it two inches? Okay, so the actual dimension is 2.25 inches. Who actually remembers why there was a discrepancy between it being 2.25 inches and 2.5 inches? Who remembers the trick I showed you with your ruler? Do you start at the very edge of the ruler or do you start at the one inch mark, measure out and subtract one to get the more exact measurement? Let me know in the QA section. What was the trick with the ruler that made that discrepancy between 2.5 inches if we measured it from this end of the ruler or 2.25 inches if we measured from the one inch mark and took away one from the final measurement. Yes, so a couple of people are starting. You see how these warm ups are getting your brain working? So some people are remembering why I made that little distinction. So when I measured my actual cup from here over, it was 2.5 inches. And I knew the exact measurement because I used an exact measuring tool known as calipers. For those who weren't here yesterday, I introduced this tool. This is called calipers. So calipers allow for me to measure 0.001 of an inch. So I was able to use these and I knew that my measurement of my cap was approximately 2.25 inches, but when I measured my cap from here to here, I wasn't getting that and I couldn't figure out why. 
So if you zoom in on your own ruler, you'll notice that where this part starts and where the zero inch mark starts, there's a good bit of distance. That bit of distance will throw off your measurements. So a trick that my father taught me is that you actually start at the one inch mark in order to get a more exact measurement and you subtract one from the final measurement. When it comes to building projects that you want to actually work in the real world, the more exact your measurements, the better. You wanna measure 10 times and cut once instead of keep cutting 10 times because you only wanted to measure one time. So that's a little life tip for you all. So what we're gonna do, since we now know that our actual, let me go ahead and retrieve my cap one more time. Boom. The actual cap that I was using is about, is exactly 2.25 inches. So I'm good on that measurement. And just to be safe, let me make sure that my actual stencil measure ups the same. So when I'm using my calipers, I just move this back and I'm gonna hold it up here. And it's 2.25 inches as well. So my stencil should actually meet the lid. So the lid that I'm using, as I mentioned before, I'm a huge fan of Korean um, home cafe videos. That's kind of one of the things that has inspired this project. The actual lid I'm gonna use for my drink is a typical four ounce mason jar lid. Well, not lid, sorry, jar. You can also use this. The 2.25 inch measurement should also work for most coffee cups you should have in your home, but I'm just trying to be a little fancy with it. So this is what I'm using. And let's see if the actual stencil top matches the mason jar. So I'm gonna ask you all a quick question. By a show of hands, raise your hand if you think this is actually gonna fit. How, how much confidence do you have in my engineering capability? I'm gonna see how confident you all are right there. Okay, okay, I have some believers. I don't have all of you, but I have some. So what I'm actually gonna do is showcase here. I have not done this yet because I wanted to make sure I showed that my measurements be on point. I wanted to make sure you understood I am not leading you into no man's land of engineering. I'm leading you the right way. So this is the top. What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Oh, is that a fit? Yes, that is a fit. It is almost a perfect fit, except for a little part right here where the 3D printer messed up the stencil. But if I was to do this, just to make it a little clearer for you all, Mm, there's the fit. So I should see all hands raised, giving me confidence or giving me your vote of confidence that my measurements were right. And that's why you use that one inch ruler trick because if I made it a lot bigger, then this actually wouldn't have been a perfect fit and I would have had issue making sure this was directly centered on my actual cup. And thank you all, you didn't really have to raise your hands, but I appreciate it, it makes me feel good. So I actually have this. And thankfully, if you ever get your hands across these, don't be afraid of them. This just allows for you to have a little bit more confidence in your measurements, just like my measuring tape also gives me a little bit more confidence. So now we have that cleared out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our stencil. So does everyone have their thick piece of paper or their cardboard that they're gonna use in order to create your stencil? Raise your hand so I know. Raise your hand, get your materials, okay? Okay, so I only see one or two hands raised. So go ahead, get your pair of scissors, get your thick piece of cardstock, or get your cardboard if necessary. And we're just gonna make a very quick stencil just so you have a proof of concept to use when we actually start decorating our hot cocoa. Now, I'm gonna call some of you out. I saw a couple of you in the Q&A section went ahead and made some hot cocoa, which is totally fine, but I hope you now know that this recipe actually makes for some really good hot cocoa, and I wasn't dragging you along or telling you a false story. It's actually a really good hot cocoa recipe. So I'm not gonna judge you for that. Okay, I'm gonna judge you a little bit, but I'm not gonna completely judge you for that. Okay, so I wanna see all the hands raised if you're ready to actually make your stencil and for us to get started making our hot cocoa and finishing off the project. <laughs> Yay, I'm 
I've seen hands raised. Okay, so I'm gonna actually shift my cameras so you can actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, can everyone kind of see my actual workspace here? I'm gonna move it slightly so you can see a little bit more. So here I actually have a thick piece of cardboard that I'm gonna be using. Well, thick piece of cardstock. And then if you want to use cardboard, I would suggest that you make sure whatever outline of a shape you want to make as your stencil, you actually have it into the upper left or right hand corner. The reason why is it makes it so much easier for you to actually cut it out. So cardboard and scissors are not friends. It takes a lot of cutting and hacking in order to do so. So I always suggest putting it in the upper corners so it's easier to get to and cut out. So that's going to be my first suggestion. So I have my outline of the 3D printed stencil that I wanted. I could also do the one with paper. The problem is I would have to take time and cut out all of these stars, and I'm not gonna do that to you all. But you can actually do that if you wanna do an exact replica of your Tinkercad model. So here I have my stencil, and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trace with a pen. Now, if you don't like using a ballpoint pen, don't worry. You can also use permanent marker in order to actually trace your stencil. Now I can go in and individually trace out the stars, but I just wanna make sure we get to the hot cocoa. So I'm gonna do a general outline. So just making a circle. If you wanna make a quick stencil and you are doing cardboard because you cannot 3D print or print an outline of your stencil, don't worry. If you see here, I'm gonna slowly move the camera. If you can see here, I have a very base outline of my actual shape. It's kind of hard to see because it's a dark piece of paper, but if I find myself pressed, I can actually look for some items around my house. So remember I said that I wanted to actually use this mason jar in order to do it. I can also use the mason jar to do the outline of my stencil, as you can see I'm doing here. And then I can find some other shape that I want to be the inner design of my actual star. I'm going to go ahead and use the egg, but if I want to force myself to be creative, I have these little wall hooks that I haven't actually hung on the wall yet. So I can actually do a trace of these, make sure it's dead center, hold it down, trace around it. and then do a little bit of editing work, because again, I'm not an artist. Once I'm finished with that, I'm gonna go in with my pair of scissors, cha -cha -cha, and I'm actually gonna lift up the piece of paper. I'm gonna cut as such. See, this is when I wish I could find my actual silver permanent marker I used to have because I love using these dark pieces of paper, but the problem is it's so hard to see when it's in a dark kitchen. So I apologize if you can't really see, but hopefully you can see some of the actual permanent marker I have right here. So next up, I'm gonna actually cut it out. Do do do. Also, I, I know I've been dating myself this whole week, but do you guys have any idea what safety scissors are? Like the scissors that don't have the metal blades on them? Were you required to actually use safety scissors? If you can show me with a show of hands. I'm just curious if that was just something that was a fad. Oh, wow, okay. I didn't know if it was just something I had to grow up with and I didn't know if everyone else had to deal with that. Especially in kindergarten, my, my hand-eye coordination wasn't great. And I remember having to use safety scissors. And for the life of me, I would continuously get low marks on my projects because I would end up having to bend things and use, I'm ashamed to say, have to wet it with a little spit in order to rip it because I couldn't use safety scissors to save my life. And now I've realized that one of the perks about being older is that people trust you with using very sharp objects, with parent supervision, of course, to a certain point, and you can actually do sharp cuts. Yay! So now that we have the major parts of our circles done, here comes a dilemma, right? So each of our shapes, we have something in the middle 
that we actually need to cut out. This is gonna be the hard part. So what I suggest doing is actually taking your scissors, be very careful with this, take your scissors and actually poke a hole in the middle of the design that you wanna do. So you see me doing this here. Using that hole, you're gonna carefully and make sure your design is big enough for you to do this. So you see, I actually made a hole. Take your actual scissor and slowly go in. If your scissor is too big, use your ballpoint pen or a marker and actually poke it in order to create an opening for you to continue cutting. If you have an oval shape like I'm doing, I like to do several cuts as such. just up to the edge. So that way I can bend the piece of paper a little bit and just focusing on cutting a little easier. So it depends on what's the inner shape of your stencil. Now, if you want a more exact, exact, exact way of removing all of this gunk, I'm gonna show you a tool. You probably don't have this tool in your home, but I'm showing you as you guys asked. You were asking me to show you what an actual engineer or product designer use as a tool. So what I'm gonna actually do is here. Go ahead. This is called an X-Acto knife. This is the Alpha brand. I like these because it allows for me to control my blades. Now, this is a very dangerous tool if you've never used it before. This is not the time to try to use it. But again, this is a demonstration of how I would do it. So when I use this blade, as you can see here, it has all these pop-up blades, right? What's amazing about the X-Acto is you have a grip on the top and the bottom. It allows for you to have very precise control when you're trying to cut things out. That's why I absolutely love it. One of the other things, which is why it's part of my arsenal along with like my calipers, is that it's so easy to cut cardboard with this. So remember I said the enemy of cardboard is scissors? Well, with an X-Acto or an Ulfa knife or anything similar to it, it's really easy to cut cardboard, especially when you're making prototypes or it looks like or works like of your final project. So I'm gonna show you how I did it using my X-Acto. So you see here, I can go here, make sure your fingers are away. Only one blade is extracted. And I can very easily go around. You can see this little bad boy lift up. And you can see that little top part that I just cut there? Easy peasy. I'm gonna say here for your stencil when you're doing this by hand, it's gonna be time is required to make it as close as possible to the real thing. So the slower you do this, A, it's safer, and B, is gonna allow for you to go as close up to your actual outline as necessary in order to bring this bad boy to life. So you see here, I'm just slowly and carefully going around the outline as such. So using my X-Acto, always remember to extract the blade and put it back in the sheet. You have that bad boy right there. So now that we have our stencil, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. Raise your hand when you actually have some kind of shape of your stencil to let me know when it's time to hop into the hot cocoa recipe. Okay, I see a couple of people. Don't feel rushed, we have plenty of time. I want you to make it with as much time as you can muster. And this is gonna be on YouTube, the recording of this, if you wanna go back and actually follow along. I'm using the X-Acto because my pride wants me to make one that is pretty professional. But if you have a pair of scissors or what have you, don't feel ashamed or what have you if your stencil doesn't look like mine. I'm cheating a little bit because I know some of my colleagues watch these webinars and I don't want them making fun of my scissor cutting skills. So I'm doing this because of pride. And boom. And you can see here how I'm pretty close to all that I need to actually make my little shape. So I'm pretty happy with this here. Let me know if your hand raised if you need a little bit more time. If you're already done, go ahead and get started making your hot cocoa if you haven't already done so. I know some of you have made your hot cocoa, but you know, yeah. So while you guys are cutting that, I'm gonna go ahead and start making my hot cocoa. So you can do two methods. I know some people frown upon actually using hot water for hot cocoa. Apparently it's blasphemous 
to make hot cocoa with water. I'm not that picky. Make it the way you want to make it and make it to taste. So if you don't want to use the milk or cream or half and half or alternative, you don't have to do that. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and measure out one cup. I have one cup of milk or milk alternative. The milk alternative that I'm using is oat milk. Sorry, I have to manage two cameras at one time, so it's a little tricky. I'm using oat milk in order to make my hot cocoa. So I'm going to be measuring out one cup. And I don't have any preference, but I'm using oat milk because, oh, actually, am I doing too much? Okay. I actually wanted to add a splash of sweet cream, so I'm going to take a little bit off just so I can add a little splash because I like to be extra. I'm going to add a little splash of natural creamer. And the reason why is I just like a little bit of fat in my hot cocoa, so I'm going to add a little bit of that to the mix. So once I have this mix, I also need to add my actual teaspoons, no, tablespoons. How am I messing up this recipe and I enjoy it all the time? So I got my sugar, and I'm going to do one tablespoon so I don't like it too sweet. I'm going to do one tablespoon. A quick trick if you're not used to baking is always take your finger and level off when you're using tablespoons to make sure you get exactly one tablespoon. It's something we don't really think about, but it's something you should do. Because when it comes to baking, you've probably heard this phrase, baking is science. So anytime you're not being exact with your measurements, it's throwing off the actual chemical reactions and things that happen in order for us to enjoy delicious baked goods. So now I already have my milk alternative here with a little splash of cream. I have my actual one tablespoon instead of two tablespoons of sugar. And so next I'm gonna add my actual hot cocoa. So it says to add two tablespoons of hot cocoa. So forgive me. Wait, how am I doing this without my apron? I don't wanna dirty up my little romper. I gotta be precise. So, and yes, I am using this very unique transformed apron to make sure I protect my romper. And continue raising your hands once you finish with your stencil. I'm just doing the hot cocoa just so we can keep it moving. And yes, you can also use a butter knife to level off your actual cup. Let me actually get my butter knife. And so we're going to do the hot cocoa right now. So I'm going to do two tablespoons of hot cocoa. So you'll see me here. My first tablespoon. And I'm going to make sure I level off in here. But because I'm that person who doesn't take the lid off, it's going to be a little difficult for me. So if you don't want to use your finger, that was an excellent suggestion. Go ahead, use your butter knife in order to level it off. So that was my first tablespoon. Let me go ahead and do my second tablespoon. I'm just going to use the lid here. So that's two tablespoons of our hot cocoa mix. So the last thing we're going to need, well, there's two more things we're going to need. It's going to be that quarter teaspoon of vanilla extract. So I got my vanilla extract. I'm going to do my quarter teaspoon. So you see me here. Now, if you have to use imitation vanilla extract, that's totally fine. I know people, there's some people who are like, there's a huge difference between using imitation vanilla extract and regular vanilla extract. And I say, this is for your cup of hot cocoa. It depends what's in your cabinet and what you're willing to spare with. So if you have imitation, don't let other people talk down to you. It's perfectly good for this hot cocoa. And then last but not least, I'm gonna attempt to be salt bathed. I got my little pinch of salt here. It looks like I need a little bit more salt in order to be extra like I was hoping to do. So, hold on. <laughs> I got my pinch. I'm gonna see if I time this right with the two cameras. Yeah, pinch of salt right there. So once I finish having all my ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and whisk this and then heat it up in my microwave in order to get it warm for me to actually enjoy. So while I'm doing that, feel free to make your own hot cocoa after I just showed you the steps and raise your hand when you're done with your stencil or, or and done with your hot cocoa. 
So let's get started. And so I have to be a little extra because I'm gonna be using this little baby whisk in order to actually whisk together my hot cocoa. You can use a fork if you wanna mix this together. I'm just being extra because I've always wanted to like have my own Food Network TV show, even though I don't cook or bake that much. So this just makes me feel more official by using this little baby whisk here. Now, if you don't have everything mixed before you put it in the microwave, that's okay. You'll get a second opportunity to whisk once it's in the microwave. If you have any questions or you're having any issues with the stencil, free, feel free right now to ask me any questions because I'll be checking as I'm listing. And you can see here is slowly but surely, I'm gonna actually move this so you can see. So I'm actually mixing it, and you can see a lot of the clumps here are actually getting banged down a little bit. But I think after a couple more whisks, I'm gonna be about close to actually sending this into the microwave. I personally like to make sure that I've whisked about all the big chunks out of this, especially if I haven't preheated my milk. In order to do this. And it's getting more aggressive and more aggressive. But yes, don't forget to raise your hand if you've got your stencil part down. If you need any help with your stencil, feel free to ask me in the Q&A part. But yes, and also let me know if you can still see both cameras. I think you can, but I'm not entirely sure. But I want to see some more hands raised, because if I don't see hands raised, that means I need to see questions. Because remember, yes, I'm having fun whisking, but we're supposed to be tinkering together, okay? And no one's going to see your questions, so don't be afraid to actually ask. She's looking pretty. So now you can see here that she's pretty much done. I'm gonna move the camera slightly one more time to let you actually see that she's pretty much whisked. All the major chunks are out. So now I'm just gonna heat up this mixture. So I'm actually gonna be taking my whisk here. Forgive, this is gonna be two zones or two views you're gonna actually see of my camera. So I'm actually going to take this to the microwave. And yes, this is how my house looks. Yes, the microwave, this is the real microwave, this is the that work. So I'm actually going to put it in in batches of about 30 seconds, just so I can make sure I don't do too much to the actual hot cocoa. And so now we're coming back over here. Hi, guys. In order to make this I lost you for a second as I was readjusting, but we're back here. So if you have any questions about your stencil, and yes, you can do the hot cocoa later with your parents. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. Hold on, that's my cue. Every 30 seconds I microwave, but this is just me being extra. I like to give it another whisk with a fork or my whisk to make sure it's still staying smooth and blended. But that's because hot cocoa is very smooth. Don't mind that. That's what happens when you do things live. Accidentally bump the microwave while trying to put it back in there, but no worries. So yes, you can do this hot cocoa recipe later with your parents. I think it'll be an actual nice surprise for your parents to come in or come downstairs or come into the room and see that you've actually made something really special for them. I think during this time, we're kind of stressed out and a lot of stuff is happening. And so doing things to remind people that you care about them is a perfect thing and a perfect treat, especially this hot cocoa recipe. If you want to try it out before you make it with your parents, by all means, you've worked hard this morning. But I want to see a couple of hands raised to make sure that you all are following along with me and that we're all good before we go to the final step. Let me check on my hot cocoa. The difference is night and day. So this isn't smoking hot, but it's pretty much almost there. I'm gonna give her one final whisk. And you can kind of see a little steam 
is foaming around my actual container here. I'm just whisking one more time. Now, I don't want my hot cocoa to be too hot because I want to make sure that my actual whipped cream doesn't immediately melt. If I was actually using marshmallows, I would want this to be smoking hot, but I don't want that right now. So I'm actually going to probably stop at this point and I'm going to just start filling up my containers. So my first container is going to be this little four ounce jar is the one I'm going to use. This is going to be my small hot cocoa. This is going to be the one I share with somebody who lives with me, if they're being nice to me today. So I have that container right there. And then I have this bad boy over here, which is my eight ounce jar. And with the eight ounce jar, I'm going to pour the rest of this here. Now, I'm going to put this in actual dirty dishes. So my four ounce jar is going to be the one that we're actually going to use to do my art. This is going to be my backup in case I need to refill my eight ounce jar or make another one. So my eight ounce jar, I'm going to move away to the side here. So long, farewell. And I actually have right here, I just have my little four ounce jar. So I'm going to see if I'm going to change the angle to move a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. If that's a little bit better. And let me see if I can raise it up just slightly, just to give you guys some height. But I want to see some hands raised continuously. I know this is a lot, so don't feel rushed, but I just want to make sure before I move forward, I have as many people with me as possible. Because, yeah. Okay, let's see. We did a test run of this, and of course nothing works like it does in the test run, so no sweat but I'm gonna just move this slightly up so it's just a little easier for you all to see. So the time I put it in the microwave, if you want it lukewarm, I suggest a minute and a half. If you want it piping hot because you have marshmallows and you want the marshmallows to melt into that very thick white layer, I would say do two to two and a half minutes. So if you want it to be lukewarm, like you wanna be able to drink it immediately, I would say do bursts of 30 seconds up to a minute and a half. If you want it so it can actually melt the marshmallows because you're not doing whipped cream like me, then I would say go ahead and do two minutes, two and a half minutes in 30 second bursts. The reason why I suggest the 30 second burst is to make sure that you're not gonna like overheat the hot cocoa because remember, hot cocoa is still cocoa powder and it still can burn or scald if you actually have it in the microwave for too long. And that's when you get that burnt taste in hot cocoa, which you don't want. If you're using a hot cocoa mix, follow the instructions on the packet because they have different proportions or amounts of sugar and dried um, evaporated milk, et cetera, that's gonna affect your microwaving times. So I'm gonna give us a couple more seconds and I'm gonna prep my actual powdered sugar because I'm gonna show you two ways of actually doing this. And powdered sugar is always messy, that's why I had to get the apron. sugar. My backup jar so I can show you the second way to do it. And last but not least, I'm just gonna be a little extra because why not? You came here for a little extra. So I see a lot of hands raised. So I'm actually gonna show you how I would do this. So with the first four ounce jar, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I would use it using my 3D printed stencil, the one that I actually made this morning. So I'm gonna lay this one on top and then use it as actual stencil to powder. 
But first things first, I wanna make an actual layer of white for this actually to show up. So what I'm gonna do is take my powdered sugar. Oh, camera's over here. Take my powdered sugar here, and I'm gonna use my spoon that I totally forgot to get. In order to do a light dusting on the top. So I'm just gonna take my spoon and lightly tap around the top of my actual hot cocoa. Now, this is why I also said you don't have to do two tablespoons of sugar if you're gonna use the powdered sugar method, because this is gonna be a whole nother, <laughs> a whole nother tablespoon of sugar that you're doing. So you see I'm just lightly coating the top. And do a little bit more. I want enough of a coating. I'm going to show you an overview. So I want enough of a coating that I'm covering the top. You don't have to do it all the way to the edge. You just want something to be like your white bookmark for the top here. So now that I've added enough sugar to send even um, Barney or any other Sesame Street character over the edge, what I'm now going to do is prepare my hot cocoa. So I'm going to take my actual cocoa and I'm going to use this to do the dusting on the top. So the way I'm going to do this here is I'm actually going to have my stencil at the very top. So you can see it's right here. And give me one second, I'm going to actually show you what the top view looks like. One moment. Oops, a little bit more sugar is needed. See, I'm taking so long, it's actually separating. I'm taking way too long. Ah, she's melting, melting. And so here, you can see over the top, I'm just gonna sprinkle across. In order to get my egg shape, I'm gonna add a little bit more, or actually, very gently. Whoop, dangerously, dangerously, dangerously. And this is gonna be our first one. Let's see how it is. You can kind of see it's an egg. It's not great. So now I'm gonna actually create an actual layer. So it's a little bit better than his here. So I'm gonna put my stencil over to the sink. We're gonna call that our trial run. And then we're gonna do our real run here. So I'm actually gonna use the same one. It's not so hot. And I'm gonna actually try with my whipped cream. See, this is why live cooking it's never gonna be what I do. So here, I made a whole layer of white. And now, I'm gonna take a second attempt at my hot cocoa. Now that I know what I did wrong, I'm gonna lay my stencil right on top. And I'm gonna very gently, I'm gonna try to multitask and show on the camera as well. And as you can tell, make sure you have paper towels at the ready for when you do this. And I'm just gently shaking it to fill up the actual stencil. And we're gonna slowly move things to fill in those holes. And let's look for the big reveal. Oops, sorry, I moved the camera. One, two, three. I messed up a little bit, but there you have it. I could have cleaned up a little bit of my stuff, but I'm gonna keep working at it. But pretty much, you also would notice the bigger you actually have your stencil and the way you can actually make sure that the big clunks don't get in the way is by using this. So I didn't sift or use this to actually filter out any of my cocoa powder or powdered sugar because I was being lazy. And you can actually tell a sharp difference from all the big clunks that you can see here they're actually on my stencil. So since I have a bit of time and I'm waiting for you all to show me with your hands raised, I'm gonna do this one more time. This is gonna be the most choco, choco pop cocoa, known to man, woman, or child. Because I'm now gonna add another layer to do this one more time. Because I feel, I feel we're improving every time. And now you understand why I watch the Korean cafe videos because I have dreams, I'm just not 100% there yet. I'm a better engineer than I am a barista. So now I got a new layer on top. I'm gonna remedy my mistake and I'm actually gonna sift using this bad boy right here. 
my actual cocoa powder to add on top. So basically how I sit, whoop, sorry, we lost that camera angle for a second. So basically how I sit, I'm gonna move this here so you can see, is I have my little sips here and I add my cocoa powder here. And what you're gonna be able to tell immediately is that we have all the chunks here that we're just gonna be sifting out. And that's exactly what it does. It leaves the fine powder there, which is what we want to actually be using. So we're gonna try this one more time. And as you can see, this gets really messy really quickly, but it's so much fun. Sorry, this is almost like food science for me. So this is like one of the highlights of my week. So now I'm gonna bring back my actual hot cocoa put the stencil on top, bring back my trusty spoon, scoop out some of the sifted powder, hold it steady. I'm gonna bring you all with me for the ride. And I hope, you, I hope you're not getting motion sickness. I'm gonna take another spoonful. I'm gonna sift a little bit more. And sift, put it back, hold your breath. Okay, a little bit better. You can see some of the dots where the stars try to form. And so this is just gonna take you actually being patient and not rushing like I am to actually get it. So I'm actually curious if you guys, I'm pretty sure you can do better than me, but this is just to show you how you can actually take your Tinkercad designs and do multiple things in real life. Oh, actually that star doesn't look that bad. I'm not really good <laughs> in the kitchen <laughs> is what you should actually probably take away from this. But how are you guys feeling? Let me know in the Q&A what steps you're at and if you're actually excited to try to pull this off. <laughs> oh, how, oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, yay, okay, a couple people are like, this is actually really fun. So I'm not the best in the kitchen, so you can actually still see there is an egg. I'm gonna call that a victory, that there's an egg there. Ooh, wait, 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 there's an egg with some dots where the star outlines are. So I can improve upon my Tinkercad model now that I know what it can actually do to improve because yeah, the egg could be a little bit better. The whipped cream on the top is making some hills, but hey, that's why we call it MLab or Bajika Laboratory because we're experimenting on how to do things. But all in all, I'm actually kind of proud of my stencil. I think I'm gonna take a couple of more opportunities to actually get this part right. But I hope, 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 this was something fun and something you guys could, like one person suggested, actually do with your family members and see who actually is a barista in their inner spirit and who already doesn't even need to go through the training. So I'm gonna let you guys wrap up on this part here. I'm gonna move some of these dishes here away. And then I wanna show you how I actually can make chocolate using one of our Tinkercad models. And the Tinkercad model we're going to be using is one from the Smithsonian. So I'm going to show you that one really quickly. So give me about four to five minutes to just clean up quickly. And also, hold on. Whew. Whew. Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> that is the most chocolatey thing I've ever tasted. Okay. And you can tell because I have two cameras up, it's actually the hot cocoa. That's a good recipe. So if anything, if you don't have a stencil, make yourself this hot cocoa recipe. It is totally worth it. Actually. It's been a minute since I've had this. Okay. So I'm going to clean some stuff out of the way. If you have any questions while you all are attempting to make this, this will be the time to ask, and I'm just gonna show you how I do my chocolate mix. <laughs> and also, just to give you context, my family are no bakers. And so one of the things I've always felt intimidated by is when I do these kind of projects and I know my family members are watching, I can kind of feel some judgment from them actually <laughs> looking at the videos and going, if you were just more patient, this thing would actually look the way it's supposed to, but you're always rushing through things. But when it comes to building engineering projects, 
you take your sweet time. So this is just one of those fun things that I'm like, you're probably gonna have one that looks better than mine. But one of the things I'll also say, if you're actually doing this in the kitchen, make sure you're cleaned up when I actually show you this next part. But I am a stickler for not leaving things out. So I'm trying to put some stuff away before I forget. Okay, give me five, well, four minutes now. To show you something, I've been working on. Still the best hot cocoa recipe. And also, I'm being very serious about this. I would love to see you all's version of this hot cocoa recipe using your own stencils. So I'm gonna be posting the social media stuff for that. That is probably a copyright song. Okay, so I want to show you something I've been working on, and this is the chocolate mold project. So let me go ahead and make sure everything is straight over in Tinkercad. And this will probably be also, like I like to tell you, your time to ask me questions while I'm getting some stuff straight because I can answer before we go right back into our last and final project to wrap up for today, which I'm really excited about to actually showcase to you all. Okie dokie. So let's go back into here. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little mini project of our little hot cocoa and creating our stencil. There's one other project I wanted to show you all, which involves one of the collections that you all saw in Tinkercad. So I'm going to show you what I did in Tinkercad right here. Oh, that's the microwave for my chocolate that I'm about to show you all. One sec. So pretty much what I did is that I actually went into my parts collection, which is the actual collection you can see on your right hand side. And I went down to the connect collection that is called printables Smithsonian. What this collection is, is various objects from the Smithsonian collection that you can actually just import into your Tinkercad and then export and send it over to your 3D printer. One of the actual objects that I was really fascinated by was actually this boot. And so I decided to drag the boot over and I made this boot a little platform. I also looked at the Triceratops, but the Triceratops looked like it could be a little complicated, as you can see here. 
the Triceratops has those horns, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to print it in time. So I decided to scrap the Triceratops that you saw earlier, and I decided to focus on this moon boot. So here you can actually see that this is pretty much a scan copy of one of the actual collectible items in the Smithsonian, and I decided to give her a little bit more grace, and I put her on a platform. When I finished putting her on a platform, I did export, and I sent her over to my Dremel. So let me show you what she looks like when I was preparing her in my actual software to be 3D printed. And of course, it will slow down a bit, but that's okay. We're not discouraged. So another software that I like to use is also Print Studio. And what I did here is that I actually imported the file, and I'm gonna show you a time lapse of what it looked like as it was 3D printing this morning. So see here, you can slowly see the base of the shoe form, and you can see the complete shoe formed right there. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a little bit better. And I'm gonna do this one more time. So when I import it into my 3D printing software, this one I use is Print Studio. It allows for me to actually do a preview and see all the layers here in slow-mo. So you're gonna see me showing the actual layers going up. And you can see it by one layer, and you can see all of the 150 layers I'm sorry, 130 layers I went into this. So you can see how this literally is like almost a thousands of thousands of pieces of paper coming to form this one beautiful object. So I'm going to show you here. So you can actually see Let me see what's going on right now. Oh. <laughs> Showing you my storage cabinet. That is not what I wanted. So as you can see, this is the actual boot here that I just took off my 3D printer. She is surrounded by a light coating of cocoa. But this is the 3D printed boot that I actually took off from Tinkercad and actually sent to my 3D printer this morning. You can see that she's cute and you can see her little platform right there. So now what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to make a mold of my actual Smithsonian boot. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take an empty silicone cup and I'm actually going to use a material. Now the material I'm going to use is called composite mold. Now composite mold, when you melt it in the microwave, that's what you heard, it turns into this liquid. But when you don't actually melt it, it actually is this in original form. So it looks like this. You zap it in the microwave to turn it liquid and you can actually use this to make molds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my boot and I'm going to drop her at the bottom of my actual cup. And then I'm gonna show you, hopefully everything works out and this doesn't get too hot. I'm actually just gonna pour my composite mold on top of my actual boot in order to create my chocolate mold of my Smithsonian boot. Sorry, I'm trying to multitask and I'm not the best multitasker, so you have to forgive me. Now, if she floats up, that's okay. What we can actually do is take like a ballpoint pen and we can rotate her, as you see, and I'm just gonna hold her down for a couple seconds until she doesn't float as much. You can also, if you're that person and you feel you're that equipped, you can actually flip her over in the actual composite mold. So once we actually finish, and you're gonna see me just slowly flip her, I always say when you're using composite mold, you can get this off of Amazon, etc. Always just be careful when you microwave it because it can get really, really, really hot. And this is one of the ways I actually use to make molds for my chocolate. So after you feel it's cooled off enough that you can actually leave your mold alone, you're gonna pop this into the freezer and you're going to freeze it for about a good 30 minutes is how long it takes to cool down. But once it cools down, you can actually take your bowl of chocolate and you can stir to make sure that it's pretty good to actually pour into the mold once you extract your 3D print. After you extract your 3D print, you can actually pop it back in the freezer to let the chocolate set. And then you have a little chocolate piece of history. So you can actually make chocolate pieces using stuff from the Smithsonian collection 3D printing it, and then using something called composite mold, which is food.
food safe material, by the way, that you can get off of Amazon and you can actually reuse to create your actual chocolate pieces. So we have about five minutes left. I'm gonna zip this into the actual freezer and hopefully I can show you guys tomorrow what it actually looks like. But, oh, okay, I see we have a bunch of questions. So the ingredients for the chocolate, what I personally use, I think, oh, one sec, it's right here. What I actually used in order to do it was I just used regular Nestle, Nestle morsels of chocolate. If you want to be fancy, you can use Ghirardelli or you can use Hershey chocolate brick bars and break them up and zap them in the microwave. How long I would zap them in the microwave? You have to double check your microwave to be honest. So I zapped these in for about 30 seconds and then did another 30 seconds for a total of one minute. I honestly say you can go up to two minutes depending how liquidy you want your chocolate. You want your chocolate when you stir for it almost to feel like a melted Hershey candy bar in your pocket if it's been a hot summer day. And the reason why you wanna do that is you wanna be able, so if you can see here, that's your little mold, it's still too warm to put in the freezer because it's still moving around. Fortunately, this cools pretty quickly. So we don't have to wait too long to actually do it. I'm actually gonna just go ahead and put it in the freezer right now so I can show you on our social media accounts what this actually looks like. But one of the helpful tips I can say is that you just wanna make sure that your chocolate can be poured into your mold. So that way you don't actually have to try to fight with beating the chocolate into something smooth to put into the mold. So depends on the chocolate you do, your microwave, et cetera. We have a couple other questions. Oh, social media. So if you wanna actually share your designs with me, I can't actually access your Tinkercad accounts just like I don't have your webcams open to see your beautiful faces. So what I'm gonna actually add into the chat box is our social media accounts. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Bajika, M-B-A-D-I-K-A. -A. And if you use hashtag Tinker Together, we can actually find your creations. Tonight, me and the team are actually gonna be going through that hashtag to find out who's gonna get our special shout outs tomorrow. Now, because most of you are minors, I have to give you this piece of advice. Use your parent or guardian social media account. Don't use yours. I'm technically not supposed to know that you have a social media account because you're technically not supposed to have one. So let me go ahead and do this here, and I'm gonna add the social media accounts here. So don't forget to share your creations on social media using your parent or guardian account on either Facebook, ah, Twitter, or Instagram. You can find us at Bajika, is our social media handle. And don't forget to use hashtag Tinker Together. And that allows for us to find you, even if you don't tag us properly. We can search all those platforms for anyone who uses hashtag Tinker Together to actually see your creations. Anybody else have a question for me? Final thoughts? What did you think about this project? And yes, I do know Amazon is closed for unessential items. What is weird is that this item is actually considered essential. I don't know to who. I don't know how it got through. But as far as I saw this morning, unless something's changed in the past couple of hours, Composite Mold is actually available on Amazon. Do I think you need to order Composite Mold? No, I don't think you need to. There's other ways you can actually create molds out of your 3D prints, even using cornstarch. If you're interested in those, I can send those over to you, but you can actually create a cornstarch mold, which is cornstarch and water around your 3D print. And then you can actually fill those molds with chocolate and you break up the cornstarch mold in order to have your chocolate figurine. So you don't have to use composite mold. I just wanted to show you guys some stuff that I use when I'm doing projects just so you see and you know what those things are. That part, not necessarily, I am expecting you to run out and go get composite mold, so don't worry on that front. Yeah, um, 
there's a lot of things for those who don't know there's a huge thing going on about what's available to folks especially in the united states what is considered an essential item and what's a non-essential item what's an essential business and what's a non-essential business so for example we all can consider gas stations and grocery stores as essential businesses because they allow for you to get from a to b especially if you're an essential worker like a doctor or a nurse helping people and on the other hand non-essential services would be like your ice cream shop is it essential if you're addicted to ice cream? Yes, but who's to say it's essential for society that the ice cream shop is open? And the same thing applies to products. So sometimes you'll find there's products you would normally be able to have delivered to your house are no longer able to be delivered to your house or Amazon no longer has two day delivery. It may be five day delivery, depending on where you are in the country or in the world. So a lot is happening right now. As I like to say, every day is a new, new challenge. Any other questions? Well, I'm going to ask one question of you all. So I wanted to do something different because for the past couple of days, we've been sitting in front of our computers, doing Tinkercad models, etc. I want to show of hands, do you want more stuff like this that we're like in the kitchen or we're outside in order to showcase things that I would do with Tinkercad and change it up a bit? So just give me a show of hands if this kind of different format. I am not. <laughs> I am not the most comfortable in like a kitchen, but I wanted to do that because I felt it was something different to add to your week. So if you want me to continue doing that, raise your hand. If you're like, oh, this was okay, but I'd rather go back to you in the office showing us different tips and tricks in Tinkercad, just don't raise your hand so I can get a quick poll so I know what to do for the rest of this week. And I'm gonna continue sipping on this hot cocoa. And also, if you have any additional questions, like always, I'm going to be handing back, I'm going to be holding back a little bit for the next couple, like two to three minutes, if you have any questions. Oh, I see some people are sending stuff in the Q&A section. Some people are saying, yes, some more of this. Some people are saying a mix of both. I agree. I think a mix of both, so we don't get so bored in front of the computer, is probably the way I'm going to go with this. But just simply let me know. Awesome. I know it's not Christmas and I know it's not the fall, but I really love hot cocoa. I'm disappointed I don't have like the whipped cream mustache yet, but, but yes. Okay, I see a couple people are like, yeah, let's just keep it a mix of both. Let's just have one or two sessions that are a little bit different. Hmm, okay. So I'm going to say right now we're hovering around the dozen or more who are actively participating. We have a lot of people who I think are just listening to me talk and are not actively participating. So no sweat. <laughs> You're not one of those. The person who just sent me that question I'm answering to. You're not one of those. Well, okay. I have like another minute or two before I have to clean up this mess. If you have any last minute questions for me, go ahead. But I think I think moving forward, we're going to try to do a mix of these things just to change it up a little bit, just because in all transparency, I know you all don't have everything from a makerspace in your home, but that doesn't mean I don't want to still show you what I would do with the things just so your mind can actually start brainstorming other applications of your design or other things you can do with it. Remember, the purpose of these sessions of tinkering together is for me not only to show you Tinkercad software, how to use computer-aided design and explore STEAM, but also to make sure that you're able to actually explore STEAM and what engineers and inventors and scientists actually do with the tools I'm showing you through these webinars. So I see a couple people talking about actual Instagram accounts. Give me one second, I'll verify if I received the message. If you're gonna see me do a squint because you know even though I wear glasses I probably am overdue for getting an update on those glasses let's see and, and yes you're lucky that no one sees you squinting but that doesn't mean <laughs> I'm gonna be able to hide behind okie dokie Yes, so I want you to still work on your Oasis project. We ran out of time today, but I still would like to see you all take your Tinkercad blueprints or models of your Oasis projects and bring them to life. I'm going to double check our YouTube channel. So if you don't remember, 
our actual YouTube channel where you'll find all these recordings is Pajika or youtube.com slash C for channel, Pajika. And you'll find the recordings if you missed yesterday's recording. I'm gonna double check, it should be on there. If it's not, I'll make sure it's uploaded tonight. So you can re-watch that webinar and see how we actually made that stencil on Tinkercad and what we did to add on to our Perfect Oasis project. It looks like that is the last question. I hope you guys had a fantastic afternoon. That does it for the morning session of Bajika X Tinkercad webinar for our Tinker Together sessions. I hope you guys have an amazing Thursday. Go out, get some fresh air if possible. Don't forget to continue to build, make, learn, and let's continue to have a great stay at home the next couple of days. Ciao. Boom.